If you love figs like I do, then you want to make more of them. So this is a super quick video to show you how to propagate figs using cuttings. And then just some things you must look out for to make sure that you don't end up losing them to all kinds of issues. Stick around and enjoy. First things first is we need a fig tree to cut. So here's a tree that you can see all the branches are at the top. If we go down, it's a long single stem. And this is where I, I did a video on notching a fig tree. See there's a notch and as soon as you notch it, a branch comes out. I have notched this tree in a few different places around here so that we can get that beautiful vase shape. But in essence, what we need is to cut this tree to give us our cuttings. So in case you missed it, I have done a video on cutting a tree like this. In essence, you can see the joins. You don't want to cut anywhere near a join or a branch. So you can see there's a branch, there's a join. This is the highest one. I've notched the tree further down, so this is the highest branch. And what I'm going to do is leave a node and I will cut above it. And I'm gonna cut it at a 45 degree angle. Like that, just to make sure that when it rains, the water runs off rather than pooling on the top. And that's it, you can leave it open, you can seal it, it's up to you. Won't, no damage will be done if it is left open. And here we have a nice big stick. It's gonna give us lots of cuttings. So before we get to the actual cutting and planting of the cuttings, I just want to give you some tips in terms of what you should do and shouldn't do. It'll just help you with the preparation and help you with the overall success. So firstly, make sure you use cocoa peat as your foundation of soil. The reason for this is it is neutral and sterile. Sterile being the big part of it. With the cuttings, you don't want to introduce any kind of eggs for worms bacteria or anything that is going to potentially attack the brand new little roots or the weakened the bark around the tree under the ground. Um, gnats, for instance, feed on the softening wood around the cutting and the new roots that come out. So they are an absolute pain. But there is a trick for that, which is the next tip. And that is to make sure that you have a one centimeter layer of river sand on the top of your cutting. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. And that stops anything coming in from the top. So the little flies that have, that lay the, the gnat eggs and they go down and start eating all the roots. That's a big problem with, with fig cuttings. Thirdly, make sure you have a humid or semi-humid environment. You don't want the leaves or the bark or anything to lose an excess of moisture especially when the new roots start coming out and depending on the weather the cutting might send out some new growth and some new leaves if they do that and they're not in a semi-humid humid environment they're just going to die off the little bit of energy that they have stored in the cutting itself is going to be wasted on growth that is going to die because it's not enough humidity. Another tip is make sure your cutting is long enough. You don't want to have little cuttings like this. Make sure they're at least 10 to 15 centimeters big so that you can go down two or three nodes. Remember those little sections I told you about? Two or three of those at least deep underneath the soil. And then a very easy one to forget is if you have multiple fig trees, make sure you label them. Otherwise, you're not going to know what's what. Before I get started, I thought I would show you what a finished tray of cuttings look like. Here you can see nice deep individual pots covered with a layer of river sand on top. Stop anything from coming in. They're long cuttings. They're about this far underneath the top of the module. And they have been in a humid environment and you can see that they're already starting to send off new shoots even though they're only about two weeks old. So the cuttings do take pretty quickly if they're in the correct environment but like I said they need just a little bit of care to make sure they can do what they need to do. So if we look at what you need here is the cocoa peat soaked overnight like I told you 
it's nice and fluffy, it's evenly moist. And the reason why we use coco peat besides the obvious that I told you earlier about being neutral and sterile is it's, it evenly holds moisture. And when you have even moisture retention, you don't have issues with certain parts drying out and certain roots dying. Also make sure you have individual modules. I have seen videos where they plant cuttings into a box altogether. I've done that and it's an epic fail. Don't do it unless you want to spend days meticulously pulling apart individual little brand new roots, which I didn't spend days. I spent a very long time, replanted them, and I would say 80% of them died because the roots are so fragile, you don't want to be pulling them apart. So it's much easier, put them in the modules, as the roots grow, take it out, I pot it into another pot, you have no issues. Here's the cutting I told you about. So I'm going to take one branch off. And this one is forking. So here you need to make some decisions. You can see this is the main stem and this is a little off cut. You can take that off. Now that is actually too small. You can keep it as a spare. If you've got some extra space, you can just plug it in and hope for the best. Here's the bigger one that I'm going to keep. And before you put it in the ground, take your secateurs or knife or something and just, just scratch up the, the bark. You don't need to go deep, just like that. Just scar it up a little bit and that'll help the contact with the soil and the water in the cambium layer to then put out some new roots and then it's as simple as stick it in now if you look at how deep deep i stuck it if i take it out it's it's quite deep so we're looking at one two up to the third node that is covered underneath and then you take your sand just a handful of river sand Put it along the top, pat it down, and that's it. So what I've done is made cut this tray to size to fit into a plastic container. So you can see in the container fits in beautifully. And as soon as this is done, all I will do is put the lid on and then every day just come open the lid and get some fresh air in and close it again. And that's my humid environment. So I'm just going to quickly finish these few up. And before I do these, remember, keep track of what is up and what is down. If you don't know, then you can have a look and you can see the nodes will always be above the line. So if you look at that, this is upside down. There's the node, the node is pointing down. So if you've got a stick like this and you've now lost track which way is up and down, look for a node and make sure the node is above the knuckle and this way is up. Otherwise, you're gonna have branches going down and then back up. Not ideal, you do not want to be growing upside down fig tree. Okay, so there you have it. From one Kodota fig tree, we now have eight. And um, pass them on to friends. If you wanted to sell them, you can. These are gonna now go into the container, left alone. And I'll probably do a follow-up video for you just to see how they have progressed and what they've done. But if you have a fig tree, you want some more, give it a go. You can see how super easy and quick it was. Anybody can do it. So thanks for watching this quick video on how to propagate fig trees. As you can see, super simple, super easy. You don't need to be a seasoned gardener or seasoned fig farmer to be able to do this. If you have a variety that's at a friend's house or somebody that you see that you want, ask them for a cutting, put it in some, news, put it in some moist newspaper, take it home, stick it in some peat moss and you're probably good to go. If you enjoyed this, please like it, please share the knowledge. So if you found this useful, share it on your groups, communities, so we can all help each other grow together. And please subscribe. Every little subscriber is another person that I can share my knowledge with and that I potentially can learn from. 
Thanks again. Until next time, happy growing.